Just a little bit of a background about me. Um, I think they know now, but I've had a love affair with the Vancouver Foundation since 2013. Um, they, with the North Band, with the Neighborhood Small Grant Program, so that's when I had my, got my first grant. Uh, this is my fourth year. there's really no age limit to who shows up. People come on their own. They come, um, a lot of kids come with their moms and dads for a craft date and it's truly inspiring and there's lots of love and crafting that happens. So yes, we learn to craft with crap. Mm -hmm. uh, so making things on a budget, we gather things from either the dump, the recycle bin, or thrift stores and I garnered a lot of resources <laughs> because I live on my own and I don't eat a lot of cereal, but I now have an arsenal of people that donate cereal boxes to me. Um, junk jewelry, buttons, old clothes. So I've been able to establish myself as that go-to girl when you have things in your recycle bin that you want to give life to. Uh, we get all ages, all skill levels, and of course the workshops are free. So what has led me to this beautiful love affair I find myself in? Um, in 2012, um, I was living on the Sunshine Coast and my weekend thing was going to the seashell dump and the Gibson's Recycling Depot and just repurposing things. And I was asked to give a workshop for Culture Days. We had 30 participants and uh, we crafted and we had a great time and it really inspired me to see that people wanted to get involved, they wanted to connect, they wanted to learn new things and I thought, well, how can I turn this, how can I keep going with this, how can I build on it? And that's when I found the Neighborhood Small Grant Program. Um, I partnered with the North Vancouver City Library and hosted three crafternoons and that was the beginning of all of this for me. So with my first grant, um, I hosted three craft renews. We averaged about 30 participants. Uh, the North Vancouver City Library was, was great. They gave us this huge room to just um, make messy. And so then they helped promote the event. Uh, it was a really win-win situation. Um, I was the one who um, sourced my materials, um, but purchased enough scissors for loads of people. And um, then together we were able to promote the event either through my blog, my website, through their uh, website, and both of our social media channels. And um, as far as so for each each project, each afternoon, I would gather three to five different ideas because um, we had all skill levels, and I wanted people to come and feel that there was something available to them. Because we would always get uh, participants that were like, "Well, I'm not really very creative," which <laughs> or crafty. You always hear that, and those are always the people that really kick butt at the afternoons. They always leave with two or three things they're super proud of. They've made a new friend. Um, and they really enjoyed getting out and being creative. And it really uh, minimizes the entry, of, like people have a bit of a fear of putting themselves out there, and so I find um, the workshops are a great way to handhold people into this great um, event. Um, so what worked and what didn't for me? Um, which uh, it's after, in my fourth year now, I feel like I've kind of got a fine-tuned machine on this. Uh, we're up to an average of 50 participants per afternoon. I have a lot of regulars that come, and then um, we're very welcoming to new participants as well. So first off, having options. Uh, being able to just go with the flow and allow people to really explore what they want to get out of the afternoon. Planning ahead, not necessarily sometimes my the thing I'm great at, but trying to source materials to promote to ensure that 
people know about the event and can just pop in and pop out if need be or stay for a couple of hours. I've learned to go with the flow. Uh, there are times I've been a bit uh, a victim of success, whereas I think with having 25 cereal boxes I should be okay, when really halfway through they're all gone. And uh, just uh, being able to adjust to your audience and being able to share and just go with it. And also I've noticed there's that, I don't know if anyone else gets this metaphor, it's the bus mentality. You get on the bus and everybody goes to that empty seat. And that's what I'll notice in the craft afternoons is people will come in and there'll be like six different tables and the one person will sit at this table, one will sit here, one will sit here, one will sit here. And just being a positive force and holding people's hand by saying, why don't we sit? together let's let's try to kind of connect and meet and being able to do that gently because for people that I've had in Minecraft I knew some people are new immigrants maybe English isn't their first language they're a little bit overwhelmed it's a big enough step for them to join us and so being able to really build up on that and at the end of the day they leave feeling really like they've gotten something from it other than their project so uh, what have I learned that no matter what you present, people want to connect. There is such a need and a drive and a passion and an opportunity and people want to get on board. Time together is a limited commodity that all of us are busy with our work lives, our family lives and everything going on, that taking a couple of hours to spend time with family and friends and make new friends is a really big deal. And that it works both ways. I have to say, I am such a better person for all the people that I've met through my three, four years as a grant recipient that I feel really grateful for that opportunity. Um, this year, uh, I'm trying to keep it interesting. Um, and I think that that's really important uh, to just kind of switch it up and, and challenge what it is you're doing. So I'm bringing in um, other uh, local upcycling experts. Um, for my next craft afternoon, I'll be bringing in someone called Billy Wood Designs, and she takes reclaimed hardwood and makes stunning jewelry. And she's going to be my co partner in making awesomeness happen. And advice for everybody. Um, this is probably one of my favorite photos. This kid just exemplifies everything <laughs> about crafter news is you just got to go for it. Uh, and then the excitement, I think kids are such an inspiring, uh, they have such an inspiring attitude. You can give them a piece of cardboard, scissors, and, and uh, a pencil, and they'll just make something amazing. And as we grow up, we, we kind of lose that, that, energy about things right but you just got to go for it plan ahead utilize your network everybody wants to help we're just not sometimes we're just not good at asking but people want to help us succeed and make great things happen and there really is no failure in creating community so uh, on a personal note this is this is uh, just a little bit of a side note on what has the neighborhood small grant has been such uh, a great connection for me. Uh, last year I had 18 upcycling workshops. I demoed at six craft tables. I taught a night class called Crafting with Craft at Quest University Canada. I was at a, I gave a presentation at a conference and a demo. I also authored a book um, which was pretty phenomenal and then um, had some print articles and had a, I got to meet the lovely Cheryl McKay who I, Saturday and Sunday mornings for coffee with Cheryl McKay and North by Northwest, that was a pretty big win. And last year I figured I crafted with over 800 people. So you just never know the power of what you do and where you can take it. So on that note, I just wanna say really a huge thanks to the Vancouver Foundation and to the Neighborhood Small Grant Program for what you do and what you inspire. Uh, to North Shore Neighborhood House, who um, I've been on the advisory committee with. To the North Vancouver City Library, who is, they're just a phenomenal library and so supportive. Even when I've 
Um, I had a bit of an I've had accidents <laughs> in the afternoons. I've learned glitter and uh, fun fur are really they're not good <laughs> things to bring. And also leaving open lids uh, cans of glue, um, also not a good thing because uh, that spilled once, <laughs> and I just I got in trouble that time. And then um, all my afternoon participants, uh, all of you really do rock, and um, I'm so excited to be here and to be part of such an amazing program and to be with all of you. Thank you.